live here on the DCT Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me, DCT. And the phone number to connect to me is 724-444-7444. Once again, the number is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect to me is 92417. Once again, the call ID is 92417. Now, let's get into what the interesting stuff that's going on here on this Three Moves Eve. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's some interesting stuff here. I'm going to be talking about some WWE news, what have you. And supposedly, ladies and gentlemen, um, <laughs> ooh, there's some interesting stuff here. According to uh, Fourth uh, World Weekly, is that supposedly this is breaking news. It's two minutes ago. I just saw that at the fan uh, freaking awesome network boards. It is supposedly a couple big things. Um, Goldberg for WrestleMania 31. Goldberg, they're trying to get that back again. They want Goldberg. And supposedly, they want the same thing they did with the Ultimate Warrior, and hopefully with a lot more of a positive result. Because uh, uh, they're looking at him to put him in a video game, announce him around SummerSlam, and use that to build to WrestleMania. Now, being a focal point of video game promotion, on the top of WrestleMania booking is the most financially beneficial way that they, that they can get for them. Which is actually interesting, but to me it's another way of trying to get people from the past instead of actually building up the talent you have already. <clears throat> but hey, who cares about building up talent? We can just continue to go into the past and such. And speaking of which, there's actually, believe it or not, supposedly, tough enough, remember that show with... Um, Stone Cold talking crap to everybody and everything else. Well, they're going to bring that back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, they'll bring it back tough enough. Um, well, because tough enough really worked again. The, uh, the next week, who was that um, silent rage guy who got slapped by Vince McMahon, took a stunner, and then got wellness and never heard from him again? Yeah, that was great. Uh, just, yeah. I mean, hopefully that, the next time with Tough Enough is on the WWE Network because they really are struggling to find everything else to put on that show, which I'm waiting for Nitro and everything else. I'm waiting for Nitro to come on so I can watch that and everything else, what have you. You know, some good wrestling on a, you know, what have you, because I'm getting in on Raw, what have you. What else is there on Monday Night Raw to talk about? You have Triple H basically being, um, um, let's be honest, he's a main event of coming into extreme roles. Again, Triple H taking over. The authority storyline is still going on, regardless of what happened with Daniel Bryan now. So basically, Daniel Bryan's win at WrestleMania is ultimately pointless because the authority figures are still around, the authority is still there in power, and, and it's going to be this way until, honestly, until Infinite, because Vince McMahon comes back and they're going to start the whole rigmarole again, having general managers do with everything else, which I'm sick to death of authority figures. Honestly, please, go die to death already. I am sick and tired of the same stupid little storylines of the authority figures. Please, am I the only one alone here? Because I'm tired of it. It's, it's lazy writing. They get booked on a crutch. Instead of actually centering a wrestling show about the wrestlers, which is, oh my gosh, that is completely genius. Why can't they do something like that? No, they just got to wrap up this authority figure and say, duh, 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 Because, you know, that's easy. Yeah. Yeah, but that's just my personal thing. Maybe I'm just going off the organization, but I, I think I'm... I'm just, you know, that's how I feel right now. That's why I feel. And by the way, speaking of things, I'm going to say this right now. I did not like the Mag- the Magneto segment. I know they tried. David said now tried his best. And honestly, it was the best thing they could do. You no, know, personally, I thought the last time they used um, Hugh Jackman uh, before the uh, whole cameo thing, he did great. Had Zack Ryder got him over and pushed him in for that story. By the way, I love the fact that the whole main focus on Dolph Ziggler and, and Zack Ryder, uh, having the reason why that whole punch and everything a couple of years ago, Zack Ryder was not even seen. Now, they could have had Damian Sandow, um, you know, have Damian Sandow and another guy say, you know, who's not really doing much? Um, 
Rodus Clay, what have you. Have Titus, uh, Titus uh, no, not Titus O'Neil, but he got jobbed out by Sheamus. Great job, WWE. Just that, that, that pointless, you know, prime top players, you know. Brilliant breakup. I mean, seriously. You know, I have Brodus Clay and, um, by the way, I have Brodus Clay and Damien Sandow come down there, have Zack Ryder and Dolph Ziggler just, you know, hey, shake it out and everything else. Then you have Dolph Ziggler. I think you have Damien Sandow, Brodus Clay, and everything else. And then it comes out, Brodus Clay's down, Damien Sandow's not, and then, uh, you know, he set up the punch again. This time he knocks out Damien Sandow, and then, you know, to help them win, take up the big victory. Then set up the same thing. You have a good tag match, and it is, and it works the same way. It's set up a pointless, not really a funny segment that honestly let me stop watching Monday Night Raw. I actually stopped watching after that segment. Seriously. I, I mean, and by the way, after that, uh, that segment, before that segment, you had John Cena had that great opening that really set the mood I really don't like Bray Wyatt with someone finally do something extreme and then you do something like this. I know you have to do it for, for the kids, but quite honestly, I just felt like this wasn't even funny. I mean, the tepid response from the audience says it out loud. The crowd didn't even care. The chance were knocked out. I think honestly, they wanted this tournament and made that seven someone to knock them out. Seriously, they wanted him to do that. I just, ugh, I just don't really like that. I just don't like it at all. Uh, let's see, what else? But yeah, that's it. That really bothers me. That bothered me. Anyway, um let's get on to this show. Let's get on to what well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be previewing rules, ladies and gentlemen. As the pay per view, I mean the special event that the WWE is throwing at this Sunday, May fourth from East Rutherford, New Jersey, from the IZOD Center. So let's take a look. And I'm not even going to talk about the pre-show because I honestly don't care about two matches fighting. Moving on. Next up is a 2-1 handicap match from R-Truth and Xavier Woods. Take it on, Alexander Rusev, and this monster that I don't even give two craps about. I don't care about this guy. I honestly don't care. He had one good match with Dolph Ziggler, and since then, he's just trying to be the next Umaga, which fails immensely. This guy would be perfect in the 80s, but let me tell you something. The eight, let me tell you something. The 80s called. They want their gimmick and their, actually, their gimmick back. And also, just take Rusev back. I'm tired of him. He looks bored out there. He looks not threatening. I'm done with this guy. I'm just I'm tired of this ah. Anyway, move on. We have another interesting match. We have RVD taking on Jack Swagger, taking on Star in a triple threat elimination match. You don't see these much often, which always be just a regular triple threat match. This is just going to be elimination, so it could go down to one on one match. So we could have RVD Cesaro, RVD Jack Swagger, or Jack Swagger versus Cesaro, which honestly that's fine with me because I think Cesaro could actually pull out at least a decent match. And you got at least a halfway decent matchup of RVD anyway. So I'm just hoping they actually do some fun stuff here. So that's why I think uh, the next stream rules for that crappy little poster or whatever. Next up is Tamina Snooker versus Paige. Um, it could be a decent match. I don't know. I'm hoping for decent. But I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. The last couple of Divas match, or, or female matches I've seen surprised me. And I'm here hoping, I'm pretending that I was in TNA. And um, I'll get to what really bothered me in TNA next week because I'm not going to reveal spoilers. But um, honestly, I'm hoping for the best. Extreme rules. I'm hoping for the best. I'm continuing to look at Paige. I have Paige become uh, victorious. Oh, by the way, I have Rusev winning against uh, R2 from Xavier Woods. Cesaro beating both, uh, both of those guys. You know, it would be nice having a double uh, double big swing and actually pin both of them right there. be nice. But, hey, you know, because they are pushing it. Cesaro. Anyway, we have Big E Langston taking on – oh, no, it's not Big E Langston. It's just Big E taking on Bad News Barrett. And will, the, will Big E – continue his basically pointless reign of Intercontinental Champion, or will he receive some bad news? 
Well, anyway, I have bad news for everybody in Detroit, Big E. Because, quite honestly, I don't care about Big E. The Intercontinental title has basically become pointless. Maybe Bad News Bear could do something with it. Honestly, I don't really care. But I'm, I'm thinking uh, Bad News Bear wins here. Next up is our most interesting matchup. We have Bray Wyatt versus John Cena in a steel cage match. Escape for, escaping the cage rules apply because, God forbid, you can't, you know, I don't know. Be like men and actually fight to the death in a steel cage instead of running around like a little sissy and getting out. Seriously, who thought this idea to make something as a cage match become toothless? Only in the WWE, where you can make something as dangerous, supposedly dangerous, as a steel cage match and make it completely toothless. Why can't I hate the escape the cage? It's pointless, it dents, it, it, it makes it completely. It makes a victory look like a coward. Oh, yes. Raise your hand if I, I escaped the cage. I ran away from my opponent. Yay! I'm a coward. Can we just have a clean finish in the cage in the one-on-one? That's all I want. I have, I want to say Bray Wyatt, but I just get that niggling suspicion that Cena will, will overcome the odds once again and beat Bray Wyatt. I don't want this to happen, but I'm picking John Cena. <clears throat> Next up, our mid-card champs, I mean, Daniel Bryan, who's going to be potentially injured because we have to point out that he's the underdog. So we have to make sure he's the underdog, so we have to have him taped up and everything. Seriously, he's going to be taped up so bad, he's going to look good. He's going to be, uh, I don't think he's going to be on Sonic Boom all the time since he's taped up and everything. Seriously, I mean, can we just have him in a regular 100% match that his match was 100% he can actually wrestle? So I have all these tapes around him. Taking on the Monster Kane in the Chain Rules match, I don't really care. Kane has lost every bit of credibility whatsoever. You can put the mask back on, you can say he's a demon and everything else, yada, 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 corporate Kane, I don't give a crap. It sucks, I don't care about it, and uh, it's Kane in 2014 in the main event. It, it could be a decent match, yes, but honestly, I don't care. Daniel Bryan wins this away. If there was any justice, he kicks Kane's ass completely. I mean, first minute. He beats him down so bad. He breaks the mask, bloodies him up, and we never see Kane again for a long time. That's it. Daniel Bryan just curse stops him. I mean, he pulls out, man. He goes, uh, American history style, that's on Kane. Just, whoa! Just takes him out. Just takes him out when we never see Kane again. And turn on his Hall of Fame speech. Yeah. But I don't think that's going to happen. But I have to my way. And now we get to the real main event as the Shield, with the United States champion, um, Dan, blah, the United States champion, Dean Ambrose, with his two uh, backups, um, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, taking on the game Triple H, Batista, and. The Viper, Randy Orton, would honestly, is Evolution, the reforming of Evolution. It's probably one of the worst T-shirts and lines I've ever seen. Seriously, that the T-shirt design is just horrible. But let's we talk, this could be a really good match. I'm hopeful. The Shield always delivers for the most part with a high impact offense and everything else. And you believe in the Shield. I think the Shield wins. But then again, you have payback. You have Triple H with the sledgehammer and a poster. So I have a sneaking suspicion that the Shield might actually lose this and have a rubber match at payback. You know, that's what's going to happen because I would not be surprised if they want to continue this again. Because hey, and have and just have him take out Batista so he can go and do his movies. Which, by the way, I love. I bet Marvel is loving this. By the way, that they're one of their main stars. One of the big stars in the whole thing is like, you know, we're going to turn into a villain and, and basically hope, yeah. Because let's be honest, Guardians of the Galaxy need all the help it can get. It needs every bit of real because to look at it, it looks completely out there. It looks great. But it needs the, this day, this, I mean, let's be real here. Guardians of the Galaxy needs all the help it can get. It needs all the help it can get. And let me tell you, 
I don't think Batista being on screen, being people with the nerds, the audience, who what Marvel wants for this movie. They can say what the council wants, but I guarantee most of those guys who are booing Batista are probably people who will be interested in Guardians of the Galaxy, and I don't think they're going to be really want to go see, oh, I'm going to go watch Guardians of the Galaxy because, I mean, you know, the one person I hate is, um, I want to say, yeah, the guy I hate so much is uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, I mean, that's not like the WWE ever had a heel, lead, a heel building up to a movie. Oh, wait, Blade Trinity. Yeah. Now, how did that work out for you, Marvel? Yeah. This is just sad. But anyway, I, I will say the show wins here, but I would not be surprised if Evolution does. I know that's a cop-out answer, but I think it's going to be a very, very close match. But I still would not be surprised if Evolution does win here. But in the end, I have my last rollout here, ladies and gentlemen, before everything. I'm not talking about the pre-show, because the pre-show sucks. Um, I have Alexander Rusev winning, uh, Cesaro, Paige, Bad News Barrett, John Cena, Daniel Bryan, and The Shield. Those are my picks, and I'm sticking with them. Anyway, we'll be right back right after this. I will be taking a look at the brand new trailer for Call of Duty, which a lot of people have been talking about. They've been buzzing on Twitter. They've been talking about it on Facebook and everything else. And uh, we'll be talking about this after we get to, um, after this nice little OC remix song, or what have you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be uh, playing a little bit of uh, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, Bowzilla for you. But we'll be right back right after this here, live on the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for listening to me, Duke CT. We'll be right back right after this. Shake it up, you know, trying to shake things up again because Call of Duty has not been 
you know, rolling in. You know, it's been slowly but surely been going down. Yes. Call of Duty, the first one should have been going down, and this could be the chance to shake this up a bit. To maybe do something, to do something of Call of Duty and what have you. And this new next gen, this will be the first big Xbox One game. And according to this, um, Microsoft Time Exclusives will remain, will honestly, will always be fun. They are going to be first. It's interesting. <laughs> uh, but then again, they know what their bread is butter. But anyway, but honestly, with the way that the Xbox One is going on right now, I think maybe they might be looking at the PS4. Because the PS4 is actually, for all counts, is a lot better. People are actually enjoying the, uh, the PS4 rather than the Xbox One at this point, which is very interesting. A very interesting um, look and um, uh, for this whole thing, which is very, um, I'm, I'm hopeful, um, I'm hopeful that maybe, you know, the Xbox will, if I get their stuff together, I hopefully, because I want to get an Xbox One, but then again, I look at the price, and honestly, I don't really care for about Connect. Seriously, Connect has, I don't know, it's a gimmick. And if people want to join about the Wii, you, the Wii, and Wii U, have you, at least they actually properly admit it. You know, it didn't take away what the console was. It didn't, was a negative effect to it. The, and Connect is basically this huge cancerous beast that honestly, if they cut it out, it would make them, it would make the thing better. I know what they want to do. They want to have a whole, you know, 3D type play, but there's no response to it. As much as I play on Connect and do things on Connect, A, well, Brennan found out, I found this out, is that A, it doesn't work as much. You don't have any feedback. That's the problem with it. And two, most of the games just don't work. It just doesn't work. The games don't work. You know? I mean, with the Wii, at least you can actually play. You can do the things. It works. Right? With the uh, Connect, it doesn't really work as much. It's a shame because I want the Connect to work out, but yeah, it doesn't. But you know what? I'm hopeful that this Call of Duty looks interesting. This Call of Duty um, now is supposedly, <coughs> it's supposedly the newest one is set in the future. In the future. They will now have energy weapons and hover and hover bikes, and it focuses on the role of PMCs, private military corpor- corporations, which and one of them is led by the character being played by the actor Kevin Spacey, which is I am actually can't wait for. And um, I am, um, you know, looking to be something else. And, let's, and also, believe it or not, um, there's actually um, going to be some. Um, there's actually going to be people who pre-order uh, Advanced Warfare from GameStop will will actually get uh, a per- person of uh, personalization pack, okay? personalization pack, like from Call of Duty Ghosts, Call of Duty Black Ops Two. Like you get new repin camo, reticle, player car patches, backgrounds, this, that, and the other. Just to have an electric type of stuff if you do this in the shop, which I haven't done. I haven't pre ordered it in so long. Like, I, I don't know if I have an EV. I think I do have an edge card somewhere. Yes, I do. I still have it, but I haven't used it in so long. It's a, oh, the GameStop Power Up Pro. Uh, yeah. I haven't uh, updated it in such a long time. I, I might have to start updating it. If I am yeah, going to go back to GameStop, but yeah, no. I don't know. Stuff like Amazon.com, I can pre-order stuff there. What's the point? Um. Anyway, I, I, I as for me, I'm interested in the game. Yes, I am interested in the game, and this might be the first Call of Duty game I purchased since maybe um, Modern Warfare 2. I got Marvel for a brief for free uh, for my sister. Um, you know, she got those hookups. But overall, I never really fully played for any one of them. I never paid full price for any of them. This might be interesting enough. I actually look something interesting, and I might actually start playing again. Of course, it might be on the 360 or the PS3, 
but I'm not because I'm not fully in with the new console. I'm not in. I'm not going to be in until there are actually some multiple of games there. I'm not going to because as long as they're still having games for the 360, I'm not going to jump into the next gen thing until they just rock the wheels for all some really good exclusives. And that might come out maybe in 2016. But until then, I'm not touching a PS3. No, not, I mean, not PS3. I have a PS3. I'm not touching a PS4 or a uh, Xbox One. I might get a Wii U just getting Smash Brothers and Mario Kart, but that's the next next gen. And, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's probably what's going to be for me in DCT. And um, that's it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching and and listening and what have you. Um, I want to thank you so much for listening. I I enjoy your company. I love listening to you. I remember uh, talking to you people. I love the fact you have comments. I love XC and you know, coming in with comments to the screen. I love it. And by the way, people, if you, if you uh, missed the live podcast out there, you, uh, remember, you can always look at a YouTube, Blip, Screw attack, all the other stuff that I'm up, all the stuff there. Uh, I have a daily motion. I don't know if I can put this stuff on my daily motion account. Uh, you know, just in case, you know, Blip finally says, oh, crap, you have this lone wrestling reviewer that doesn't bring any reviews. Uh, tell them to shut them down, you know, that sort of thing. I might start uploading there if uh, if I need to. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I'll be on that guy with the forums. Uh, I'm going to start uploading stuff at, uh, you know, forums at, um, uh, that one video gamer and stuff, uh, and, uh, and, um, other stuff here. So if it's, uh, hopefully I can find a way to get the time to do so, or I'll probably upload some stuff on, uh, Manic Expression on their forums as well. You see, maybe if I, my stuff is actually going to get on there, because that, because that site looks really interesting. Anyway, um, yeah. And that's it for me, Dixie T. Peace and love. I'll see y'all when I see y'all. And hopefully in the next couple of days, I'm going to be uploading some very interesting stuff. And uh, my WrestleMania 30 review is on the way. It's on the way. I'm typing it up right now. It's almost done. I will finish it up hopefully by Monday. And after that, we're going to start filming me and TWK. We're going to do a great crossover. It's going to be awesome. And I can't wait for you guys to watch and enjoy and bitch at me for, for my WrestleMania 30 opinion. Anyway, this is Duke CT here. Peace, love. See y'all when I see y'all. Later. <laughs>